hyper-dimensional computing. I know, I know. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. But trust me, it's not as mind-bending the complex as it sounds. The best way to understand hyperdimensional computing, in my opinion, is to take a little journey through history and philosophy. I want to start by taking you back all the way to ancient Greece and talk about Plato's allegory of the case. In this famous centuries-old thought experiment, Plato imagines a group of people chained in a cave facing a blank wall. Behind them, a fire casts shadows of objects on the wall. The prisoners believe these showers are reality, not realizing that they're merely representations of the true objects behind them. Pretty grim, I know, but I swear it's worth talking about. Plato argues that our perception of reality is like those shadows, a mere approximation of the true forms that exist in a higher realm of existence. While his explanation is a bit over the top, it serves as one of the earliest examples of this idea, that the world we experience is not the world we live in. Fast forward a couple thousand years, and we have Jacques Derrida's concept of deconstructionism. Derrida believed that the meaning of words and all of the things we experience can be defined relatively, not absolutely, and that all these things can be broken down into smaller, interconnected components. Both Plato's allegory of the cave and Jacques Derrida's deconstructionism can be compared directly to a network of neurons in an AI system. Each node represents a piece of information, and the connections between them define their relationships and derive their meaning. Deconstructionism is all about analyzing these networks and understanding how meaning is created within them, while the allegory of the cave simply lays the groundwork for this more modern take on the idea. Now, let's talk about embeddings in AI. In a way, embeddings are like the shadows in Plato's cave or the deconstructed values of meaning in Derrida's philosophy. They're a way of representing complex data, like text or images, in a simplified mathematical form. This is how popular AI tools work, as well as most AI systems. They break down complex and meaningful ideas into pure math. Traditional AI typically tries to compress data into fewer dimensions, meaning the size of the information is reduced within the network, making it easier to process and analyze. This is comparable to Plato and Derrida's ideas, as we're representing the experienced information in a reduced form. In contrast, hyperdimensional computing takes the opposite approach. It maps data into a much higher dimensional space than the input information itself. By using high-dimensional representations, hyperdimensional computing can capture more nuanced relationships between data points and perform certain tasks more efficiently than traditional AI. Hyperdimensional computing is particularly well suited for problems involving pattern recognition, associative memory, and analogical reasoning, things that our brains are naturally good at. In fact, some researchers believe that hyperdimensional computing may be a closer approximation of how our brains actually work compared to traditional AI approaches. This is quite interesting because it somewhat negates or flips the ideas proposed by Plato and Derrida. It shows that we actually create a more complex representation of the information we perceive than the raw information we perceive itself. This makes emotional sense to me, at least, that our senses and the meaning we derive from them is more complex than what we perceive on its own. For example, when you see an image, you not only see the raw image, but also connections between things, shapes, faces, emotions, and what it means to you overall. While my perspective on hyperdimensional computing is cool, the technical aspects of hyperdimensional computing are also worth talking about. The core idea is to represent data using high dimensional vectors, typically with thousands or even millions of dimensions. These vectors are often binary or integer valued, making them computationally efficient to work with. So on hyperdimensional computing, information is encoded and manipulated using a set of arithmetic operations called hyperdimensional operations. Make sense? Two key operations are binding and bundling. Binding allows you to associate or link two vectors together, while bundling enables you to combine multiple vectors into a single composite representation. One of the powerful features of hyperdimensional computing is similarity-based retrieval. Because the high-dimensional vectors preserve semantic relationships, you can easily compare vectors using a simple similarity metric, like cosine similarity, this allows you to quickly find similar or related data points, even in a vast sea of information. Compared to traditional machine learning approaches, hyperdimensional computing offers some unique advantages. It can learn from a small number of examples, making it data efficient. It's also highly resilient to noise and errors, thanks to the distributed nature of the high-dimensional representations. And perhaps most impressively, it can perform complex tasks like 
analogical reasoning and one-shot learning, which are challenging for many other AI techniques. So what can we do with hyperdimensional computing? The possibilities are vast. It could revolutionize areas like natural language processing, allowing computers to truly understand and reason with language. It could power advanced robotics, enabling machines to navigate and interact with the world more intelligently. And it even might help us crack the code of the human brain, shedding light on the mysteries of cognition and consciousness. So there you have it. Hyperdimensional computing explained to the lens of ancient philosophy and postmodern theory, because, because yeah, this is the kind of stuff that an enrolled person thinks about all the time. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, it's a fascinating approach to AI that draws inspiration from the way our minds make sense of the world. While it's still a relatively new field, hyperdimensional computing holds a lot of promise for tackling complex problems in a more brain-like way. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to reduce every ounce of meaning humanity has ever thought up, felt, or appreciated into pure math. Yay! Just kidding. We're fine. Everything's fine. Probably. Maybe. Let's see.